Too loud to the mic? <laughs> I'm, I'm a pretty loud gulper in general. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Are we, did we start? Yeah. So tell us about the gulping. So <laughs> You want me to demonstrate? Yes. Because <laughs> right. that's nobody has ever said that to me before. It's Brian's pet peeve. Oh, is it? Oh, you drink like that. Oh, yeah. But that's kind of perfect, uh, like Gatorade commercial model ah. level gulping. So, yeah. Yeah. Just gave sure. me a job to do. I'm yeah. going to try out for that. <laughs> try it. Now you know. You can audition for one of those. They'll be like, okay, now, and you're. you're <laughs> I feel like there's people who have like thinner cheeks or something because, like, there's some people who, whenever they chew like chips, you can hear it way louder than other people. They must. It must be like a thinness of the cheek Maybe or something. It is. You feel like your your cheeks are well insulated. No, no. My brother used to complain about me all the time. So you also have thin cheeks. Maybe. Interesting. Nobody's I, ever complained about my cheeks. I do bite my cheeks, like the inside of my cheeks and stuff. So oh, yeah. I feel like that might, like, dig away at it. No, if anything, that would build up scar tissue. I bite my Maybe. bite my cheeks all the time. I thought I thought of it both ways before, but then like yeah, my brother hated me whenever I would eat chips next to him in the car. Yeah, he would like legitimately just start punching me, like stop making so much noise. I'm like, I'm just eating. I, I don't know. Maybe it's not the cheeks. Yep. Maybe it's like the inside of the mouth, like how it echoes inside. Maybe. Maybe yeah. So you're saying your mouth. mouth is cavernous. Yeah. <laughs> You guys both have issues with your faces that you you need to resolve. <laughs> you just both revealed that you have been spending years staying up like, are my cheeks too thin? It's like, is my mouth cavernous? What's wrong with me? I mean, when people next to you complain, you kind of ponder. Yeah. I mean, maybe the person is overly sensitive, let's say, right? Red, Red Ben is like a... He, he gets grossed he out. He seems like a very organized person no 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 but he gets grossed out by me he gets grossed out by you yeah well you tend to be pretty open about your body that's the yeah because yeah. you were just uh i mean the last picture i saw of you was just full throat canker sores on the internet yeah uh, i don't know why i like sharing i don't mind it <laughs> i don't mind it i just i just thought it was funny because yeah. <laughs> it's interesting to me I'm like when scrolling instagram everyone's showing their tits <laughs> you know and they're like, what? Ah. This is the weirdest looking boobs I've ever seen. <laughs> is that a <laughs> pussy? Curse. Yeah, no, it's like boobs in a pussy? What is happening with this right now? <laughs> but uh, I thought it was interesting because you also have a joke about um, other health issues. Oh, yeah, right? my hemorrhoids. Yeah, yeah, hemorrhoids and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I think it's cool. I think more people should talk about shit like that because it's kind of uncharted territory. We don't yeah. really dive into that. We had a whole arc on yeah. this podcast about butthole health for a while, like early on. Yeah. It, I love talking about that you're stuff. You're in the right place. I'm telling yeah. you, you're going to feel right at home. For yeah. sure. Trust me. All right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I also think it fits because of the book, because uh, Dark Tower 2, Dark Tower, I've noticed, um, has a lot of body horror kind of stuff, yeah. right? So that that's the kind of uh, mutilation of bodies that you don't tend to see in a lot of novels because I, I think they actually don't want to gross people out too much but he kind of dives right into that right yeah. like there's there's things happening to these characters that th it's irreversible right like this guy loses fingers and toes the right? opening act yeah the very yeah. opening act like in um in another kind of a movie or book that would be the end right right you, usually when so it's kind of um uh, which it's kind of uh, bigoted, right? Because you think that some, just because somebody gets mutilated that they're going to die. Yeah. Right? I, I, I hate whenever there's like a fantasy or sci-fi thing and then that like somebody loses an arm and then they're like, oh, cheat code. It's a robotic arm now. It's like, mm -hmm. no, make him like try to survive and do badass shit with one arm. That would be. That, that's what I liked about this. It was realistic because he had to survive an infection. And that's all. That's always the first yeah. like danger, like like in Wilson or uh, Castaway. Mm -hmm. When he got all that, like those like cuts and shit. I'm like, of course, he's going to die of an infection. That right. tooth that he had to like break off. Come yeah. on. Mm -hmm. How did he survive four years? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, and it's it's not good for people who are in a situation like that, right? You got people trying to traverse the Darien Gap from South America, North America. They think they're going to do it right with um, just a stick and a dream. Yeah, a jug and, of water. And <laughs> yeah, and they just they graze the side of a piece of rusty metal, right? right. And then they don't realize they got to do something about that, right? Next, thing you know, they think they're winning, but they're hallucinating. They're just like half their faces in a creek, and right. they're just like, "I'm, I'm almost there," you know. But it's just the fever. The fever has taken over. Yeah, and then uh, and you're dead in the Wild West too. That was a 
<laughs> big thing, you know, like losing body part and shit. I think I was a little too intense for Justin right now. <laughs> Direct eye contact. <laughs> Made it real personal, with Justin. Justin, I can't help but like look it over. Justin has like Kramer. Sometimes Justin has like Kramer energy, you know. So you, you look over and he's like, "What? Fuck that!" <laughs> Shit. Headphones go flying. My- yeah. <laughs> Well, for anyone who's joining in, this is the Turtle Reach Podcast. I'm Clay, and this is Melissa. Oh, yeah, that's right. Hey, what's up? How's it going? <laughs> Thank you for joining in, listening Yeah, stuff. We Straight got our conversations. guests, uh, the, the very wonderful, lovely Janice Min. Very Indeed. awesome. You've seen her on Kill Tony. Um, she is the uh, partner, life partner of one uh, red band. And uh, recently, you guys just got hitched. You got engaged to get married. Yep. Yeah. On the Kill Tony New Year's Eve episode. Yeah. How do you feel about that? That was fun. Mm. That was exciting. <laughs> yeah. This is kind of attitude that I feel like for a second he thought she was going to say no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I have to admit my reaction, I was kind of guarded at first because like, like my first instant thought was, wait, I'm confused. Why is he getting up? Is he trying to make fun of me or something? And then once he got on his knees, I thought he was trolling me. Yeah, I could I could see then, that as a, it, yeah. yeah, I could see that as a possible thought for sure because it's like yeah. with the group, the community that we're in, it's like Yeah. Yeah, they might troll a proposal, but yeah, that that would be crazy to do it on such a large like yeah. at, at Kiltonia, it was at that size. And he would never do that. That would have been so mean. That would have been horrible. Yeah. <laughs> a little much. Yeah. <laughs> But still, you had a good poker face. You were like, just in case. Right, exactly. Zero point zero 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 five percentage. Yeah. <laughs> well, but even then, you were you're pretty snarky about it. Um, what did you say? You said uh, something really funny. I actually told somebody else about it because it, it was uh, you. You said something to the effect of, uh, I, I said, yeah. uh, if like I, I've always said that if if I saw anyone get proposed to on the show, I'd be like, I feel really bad for that girl. Yeah. You know, and uh, I, I, I I have said that. I did say that before. But she said just that, and then she didn't say anything after that. <laughs> <laughs> she just kind of stood there. <laughs> so that That's was, uh, great. It's yeah. like, read, read the rest of what I want you to know <laughs> from yeah. what I just said. <laughs> yes, you took that with a lot of style and pizzazz. And when, you, when is the marriage... We don't know yet. We've uh, we've never been like big marriage people, or like, like I we're both not into like throwing a big expensive party for one day for other people. So we're thinking of doing something fun, you mm-hmm. know, like um, like Vegas or something easy, city hall. But Brian had an idea. I don't know if you know. He has like this thing about Olive Garden. He has like a song that he made about Olive Garden, and so uh, yeah, Brian Redman wrote a song about Olive Garden. Oh yeah. Where is this? Is you can it find on, it on YouTube? Yeah, oh. it's called Olive Garden Butthole. It's actually I, I really like it. It's a catchy, good song. <laughs> he's made some songs that are actually I like. But um, <laughs> so he's singing. We could rent out a Olive Garden. We could have all Olive Garden food. And then uh, in the virtual red band, his his streaming show that he does, um, he plays Wendy. Because he also has a thing about Wendy's. I've checked it out before. <laughs> it's the show. <laughs> and I'm a hot dog, as yeah. you know. And yes. so, like, all the bridesmaids or the brides people would be uh, dressed up as a hot dog. And then all the grooms people would be dressed up as Wendy. That's perfect. Man, why don't, How do you why don't y'all do different I, I like food stuff and different, like, fast food people, like, burgers and for the brides people, like, burger, pizza, all that shit. And then, like... Burger King, uh, Mc- Ronald McDonald, shit like that. No, exclusively Wendy's. Okay. Yeah. Why? Oh, so his his mom worked for Wendy's when he was a kid, and he he met like Dave Thomas, and now he's just obsessed with it for some reason. Okay. <laughs> really? That's yeah. like it's almost like a Quentin Tarantino backstory. <laughs> <laughs> that they show you at the end. It's like his mom at Wendy's. Oh yes. Are we gonna play this now? We can. Is he gonna copyright strike us? <laughs> no. 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 Definitely not. He wants the world to know about this song. Olive Garden Butthole by Red Band. Uh, 
All right, I'm uncomfortable already. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like this. <laughs> I'm a bit hungover. Won't you come with me? Maybe this was a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been there in so long. I, I don't even remember half the shit they have there. I, I just yeah. know it's Italian, so I'm like, I might get spaghetti if I go there. But they, that's all they have. You got to be more specific. <laughs> well, the unlimited salad. That's nice. That's what you get? Yeah. Is it what it like? Uh, oh, that just comes standard. Or you, you can get it, but. Yeah. Salads, that's a lot of work. Really? <laughs> Too much chewing? Yeah. <laughs> too much too much stabbing. Yeah. That would be something you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I, do. I, do. Yeah. I do. Do you eat a lot of salad? Uh once in a while. Once in a while. I don't well, like to make salads too much because I feel like that's a lot of work and then you yeah. don't feel like it's not really a meal. Yeah. yeah. Why are you being sarcastic? Do you like salads? I do. I do. Obviously. Because you're, you're scoffing at it. What what do you you make salads? But I but I it is hard to consider it a and how much work I would put into what I, I put like everything on it. Oh, that's a lot of work. Yeah. 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 For salad. What's like a salad you make? But do you put hard boiled eggs or something? Uh, oh, 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 I'm sorry. Okay. Because <laughs> you're late. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I sit my ass out the kitchen. <laughs> oh, I see. That's why you're making yeah, salads. I get showed up. Uh, salads is up like you put a bowl of crap together. You look, I'm helping. Meanwhile, like, make me a salad, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rebecca's like, go do something. Yeah, make yourself well. useful. She's making like meatloaf and just turkey and everything yeah i make myself useful by staying out of the kitchen ah this is when i do try to cook and she comes just stands behind me go oh you're gonna do that <laughs> she's a backseat cooker i, I do that with ryan that's yeah. lame yeah i do that you do yeah don't do that gene does that don't do that what the fuck is wrong with you people that's like, hilarious the woman does that in this relationship the woman does that in this relationship the man does that in this relationship the hell <laughs> We're blending gender, gender you blending. don't know how lucky you are, Clay. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy your yeah. enjoy your single years. Yeah. Fuck, dude. That's that's You're the most solid. that shit rattles me so because I I'm too too distracted. Like I'm too easily distracted. I'm too frazzled normally. Just just kind of scatterbrained. So to have somebody behind me, like you you forgot the aren't you gonna that is a lot it, yeah. that it, is a lot it makes me i'll start burning my hand and yeah. th dropping shit i don't know why but i can't i know it's their fault yeah that's I, why i i, I wouldn't not. be able to do that like if i am going to be cooking something it's probably going to be like one of my cajun dishes and if i have a chick behind me going like are you going to do that i'm like i make you crawfish etouffee i know how to make this i'm sorry just step away yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah that's right back back off <laughs> Back off of making me pies. And I'm like, you're getting the crumbs and the butter. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> then you're going to put it back in the fridge, uh, and now I'm going to have crumbs in my butter just use next the time. Stick Is to this? put it on toast. <laughs> like, just take a stick out, just rub the stick on toast. I'm What's like, wrong with that? I love doing that. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. It can be used again. It doesn't have to be. <laughs> ja Listen, it doesn't have to be perfect because you can always recycle it. You're right. I need to, I need to let go. You got to let go yeah. of that shit. <laughs> Trust me. That's right. You want your marriage good marriage life. advice. You, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're just gonna you're gonna make them have to just start cooking with some headphones on or something because I mean that's the only way you can have like the zen of the, cooking is about silence in a way. Yeah, yeah. like the flow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, your your voice is you're too. Uh, you have a Daria kind of vibe. I do. I do. Yeah. So then on top of that, it's like dry. It's like Daria is just like. <laughs> la 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 oh la. my god no, I, 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 <laughs> so it's like an indictment on top of everything else <laughs> i know i need to watch myself sometimes because it, it does come off a little harsher sometimes you know i don't know how to be soft you don't have to be anything yeah, yeah it's great it's like maybe i don't know maybe it's the canker swords oh maybe yeah make your voice uh, i was very uh <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's your cavernous mouth. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm thinking about the hemorrhoids. Oh. And the hemorrhoids? Fuck yeah. Um, yeah, you have a great joke about that. Um, I don't want to spoil it, but yeah, you guys should watch with Janice doing stand up. How long have you been doing it now? Like, I would say three months now, but 
not really going out and doing it. I want to a lot more now that we've moved down here. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, yeah now's Ooh, now's yeah. a good time to bounce around and hit all the yeah. yeah. It's getting crazy. It is. Yeah, with all the comedy clubs and everything, and yeah. So, um, do you like it? Yeah, it's it's nice. I I've gone to like five of the different clubs, and it, every it, it's weird how it's gotten kind. It naturally is going to get clicky once you get more people, but I don't really th- even think of it as clicky. It's just people finding their own people and then choosing a specific spot to make their regular hang. Mm-hmm. What sucks is not sucks, but what's really weird. The Creek is kind of like the open mic hangout clubhouse. Mm-hmm. And so all the new, new people come and they kind of congregate here. And now I don't know, like, more than half of the open micers that come through. Mm-hmm. And, but I've been here for like two and a half years at, at this club. And it's like, ah, I don't know most of these people. Yeah. Start selling drugs. Yeah. Man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not like a I... good drug dealer. I am not. No, you're not. You're horrible at it. <laughs> Wait, why is he bad at it? <laughs> I, I mean, look at him. I mean, this, one is, time, this is an advertising yeah. for drug dealer. <laughs> like, you don't even have to do anything. You just got to sit in the corner like you usually yeah. do. No, for sure. You but never had... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, I did. He started bringing it just because people were like there trying was a, to buy it. There was it. a point whenever I regularly had like a stupid amount of weed, but like at one time I weighed out uh, in the wrong scale on the scale. So instead of weighing out grams, I was weighing out like a different scale altogether. So I was giving everyone way more oh, than I no. should have. It was on like. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. Must have been a very popular guy that week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I, at one point, all I could find in Ziploc bags at the 7-Eleven was the big giant Ziploc bag. So I was giving people eighths of weed in these giant. Rebecca roasted me for like two weeks about that. This is the problem with the fact that we're the only people that don't have the metric system, you know? <laughs> so you we were giving away system. ounces instead of grams or what? Probably, yeah. Was, that, with ounces is like a crazy amount. No, I, I, was, I think I was doing like people would buy an eighth and I was giving around a quarter to a half to them. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was. Uh, I forget what the weight was. I was supposed to be on grams, and I was. I think I was doing like pounds or so, some ridiculous fucking thing. And yeah. I was just like, "Oh, this is three point five, but it's a completely different scale." <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah, I was not a good drug dealer. It's not your fault. It, it, it's like suddenly, it's like everything else in this country. We use ounces and and fluid ounces, right? But when it comes to our fucking narcotics, suddenly we're French. You know, like what is that? Well, suddenly, you know, we're 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 just European. That doesn't make any sense to you. Just suddenly use grams, which should be probably ounces. We should measure our drugs like sugar, because yeah. drugs are a sugar. Or, uh, sugar is kind of one of our drugs. So just measure the whole fucking thing together. Tablespoons. Yeah, ta- give me a tablespoon, <laughs> right? Wouldn't that just immediately make sense to our Americanized brains to just be like, listen, let me get a teaspoon. Let yes. me get, listen, I want a teaspoon of mushrooms and, a, and two tablespoons of chronic. Thank you. Right. <laughs> and I want a fourth of a table of teaspoon of uh, dabs. Thanks. You're right? going to get all fat people addicted to drugs now. <laughs> <laughs> what else is new? <laughs> I think, honestly, people used to say that weed was the gateway drug. But yeah. I don't think it is. I think it's that weed makes you have munchies. So you start eating sugar. And I think sugar is the gateway drug because sugar is is like crack, really. It, like you ever eat like a shit ton of sugar and then they feel hung over the next day? No, that's never happened to me. Really? Ever. Have you ever uh, tried really? to? It was a, that was a joke. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, with you, I don't know. Because last time I was here with him, this guy, this motherfucker was eating a, a whole chocolate bar of mushrooms, like mushroom chocolates. Holy shit. Just one chunk after the other. Carrying on a conversation. What happened that day? That Not, one was fine. Nothing. There was there was another time Halloween. I, I, I told the story on here. I did uh, too much of a, a little bit of everything, and then uh, yeah, fell or uh, blacked out on the concrete out back and smashed my head. Yeah, you just face oh, planted damn. outside. Yeah. yeah, we got the security footage on the podcast up and everything. Nice. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's the reason why that. he wears these hats because <laughs> that's where most of his injuries occur. Yeah. So he just <laughs> puts a little fitted over it. <laughs> You're, there's just bandages under there every, <laughs> every day. No, yeah. Um, I, I, mushrooms is, is a fun one to do, though, for sure for I me. Like uh, weed, weed is basically just gets me to a baseline of like I, 
I could just keep on smoking and I don't really get high high, but mushrooms, I've started microdosing now, just 0.3 mm -hmm. uh, every day. But I used to, I grew up on a farm, so I, I used to do like ridiculous amount of mushrooms and then just be like, oh, I'm not feeling high anymore. Take a couple more. So yeah, my tolerance is ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It really is. He well, the half life for for mushrooms is like, what do you call it? Like half your to your tolerance just goes up. Like you, you take it two days in a row, and it's oh. like it doesn't work. Yeah, the next day or something. It's your yeah, half life is uh, radiation. <laughs> right, like how how fast it dies out. I wouldn't be surprised if mushroom tolerance does increase by half life, like like a fucking isotopic, <laughs> <laughs> just exponential something. I don't know. That's the end of my knowledge of that. Anyway, so no more words uh, <laughs> in that direction. Uh, okay. So, yeah. so uh, we do have a book to talk about. Yeah. Uh, we'll get to it. We'll get to it eventually. Anyway, let's talk about something else. No. So, no. <laughs> all right. I'm kidding. Um, We're doing uh, The Dark Tower, the second book, The Long Road Home. Um, it follows up after the podcast we did with Craig uh, and Roland and Alan and Cuthbert are going back to the town to find Susan's body all burnt up after they went and tried to, uh, they got in that fight with the, or not fight, but the standoff with the uh, big coffin hunters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which was ridiculous. I made my point. Um, what point? On the last podcast. Oh, yeah. it was it was It was like, it was Looney Tunes. They literally just like walk in behind each other one by one. It was it was Looney Tunes shit. All right, well let's not go back to that. All right, All right. this that's it's starting to feel like we're in the scene with the coffin hunters. We're <laughs> we're just in line in back of each other to argue about it. But um, but yeah, they find Susan's corpse burnt and they uh, take her body and they're gonna go and give her um, they're gonna go give her a proper burial. And all of a sudden, Roland freaks out and shoots the orb, mm -hmm. releasing a crazy eyeball tentacle monster from it, mm -hmm. which was fucking weird and it jumps on his face and then steals his soul uh in the second one yeah oh yeah well that's the thing so here's the interesting thing the novels and the graphic novels are diverging holy sh I, I, by a lot that's all new to me that me too. I, I didn't read and that. I, I wanted to do it like this because i thought it'd be interesting to see us yeah. try to figure out what the fuck is going on okay because the graphic novel you did you read the dark tower novel one at all yeah okay so one and two Okay, great. So the the graphic novel first one also jumps ahead a ridiculous it just leaps and bounds. You get to the part where you know in the novel <clears throat> um they keep referencing uh, a woman that he Susan, loved, yeah. Susan, right? The first one just totally says what happens to her. Mm -hmm. And uh the novel doesn't. Yeah. And then so it, the orbs come into play with that plot, but they don't in the novel. So oh. I'm wondering why he made that choice. Maybe the graphic novel, maybe with visuals. Yeah. Because like with movies, you notice that they always add way more explosions and color and, and vibrancy. So maybe without the Susan Orb story, which basically is that uh, they hook up when they're teens. Um, they use Susan to get back at him for something that's going on and they burn her alive, basically. Right. They sacrifice her. They sacrifice her. And then there's orbs involved with that magician guy. Yeah. That come out in the graphic novel in the first one. And then I guess he shoots him in the second one. Yeah, he shoots the orb uh, out of Cuthbert's hand. And uh, yeah, uh, it inside the orb is this giant eyeball with tentacles. Wow. Right. And uh, yeah, it, it jumps on Roland's face and steals his soul. Yeah. And then turns back into an orb. See, this is good because now we have actually shit to tell each other. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, we're both like, what? <laughs> Susan but, dies? Yeah. <laughs> that's fucked up, you know? But then there's shit that's going on in the novel that I'm not sure is in the graphic novel, right? Like, uh, there's that scene where they're going through the tunnel underground with the uh, radioactive zombies. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did that happen in the graphic novel? Not yet, no. Yeah, the exactly. Humans, wow. So yeah, isn't that interesting? Craig was saying on the last one that yeah. this is... Basically, what's happening in the graphic novels, book one and two, they talk about in book the regular book four, right? Like around a campfire as a, like an old tale of Roland's old oh. adventures and shit. Oh, well, then that would make sense that they would try to throw it in the graphic novel because then that would just be backstory that they could get yeah. through. Yeah. Up until the fourth one. Yeah. Crazy. Look at that. 
Yo. Is this even the same thing? <laughs> this is, this, that's what I'm wondering. So that's what I want to know. Because now it feels like the... I guess it kind of is, but um, it's like the graphic novels in the future simultaneously. Whereas we're actually in the more linear story. Yeah. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, but the second book and the graphic novel still i think they map to each other because there's the drawing of the three mm -hmm. so that plot is so essential that that has to be in the graphic novel right where he takes he gets the the three people that he needs to travel to the dark tower with yeah okay right yeah i'm pretty sure yeah what about the black woman how is she presented in the graphic novel odetta yeah i'm not the gunslinging sure she's like a twin I don't think she's in the second book. That's fucking crazy. What? Why is it so different? Hmm. I don't know. All right, we're going to have to do something about that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe Stephen King's racist. Yeah, but that makes... That doesn't... Yeah, maybe. No, dude. Okay. Uh, do you want to tell him about Odetta? She's... Because it is... All right. Yeah. She, she's just your stereotypical... <laughs> it's insane. Yeah. Okay. She... All right. The drawing of the three, he's finding the three people to travel to the tar tower with, right? Mm -hmm. He gets the who's the first one? Uh, Eddie. The Eddie is the is that the kid? Yeah, he's the pris or the prisoner, and he's the drug addict. He's addicted to heroin. Right. And then the second one is Detta. Yeah. And then the third one is uh, it ends up being him himself, right? Because no, technically so, it's that serial killer. Yeah, technically it was a serial killer, but uh, so Odetta and Detta. There are like two people in the same body because she has like a split personality and um, they end up being the two and the three because she finally reconciles with, with what happened and she uh, like combines the two and takes the best of both. I yes. Guess. OK. Yeah. So we got to do so we got to we're going to have to read both, I think. Maybe. Right. Because look how much it deviates. Yeah. But um, maybe it only deviates up, to, up until the fourth one and then it's OK. Well, yeah, I I think that like the graphic novels are like prequel, mm -hmm. like a prequel series before all the stuff that happens in the books. Mm -hmm. So honestly, reading the graphic novels before the books might be like the correct chronological order. Well, not necessarily. It depends on how you want the reveal, because I kind of prefer it this way, where you know that he's longing for a girl, but you don't know what's going on yet. Um, the drawing of the three one kind of felt like the story is complete because now it can begin, right? Uh, if you get too too much aware of of already like what his motivations are and what happened to him right. and who, who even who the uh, ultimate uh, baddie is, which you kind of do in the prologue in the graphic novels, I don't. I kind of don't like that as much. I, I feel like finding out about this like orb shit and Susan, it kind of like spoiled something for me. Like I was some, some, exactly. supposed to find out later because. Even even like the order of the books, like uh, the gunslinger and then drawing of the three, the gunslinger, it was a little bit slow for me because I was it was like laying out the groundwork. Oh, OK, this guy is like going through this desert. OK, and it's like you're still you still have a lot of questions and you're like, where is he going? And then uh, the drawing of the three, you're like, all right, here's some action now. Um, he's collecting his crew and now they're going to this one specific place. And then you kind of like hear about Susan in the past, but she's not really essential to the main storyline. So like all this stuff, you're like, I don't know, it didn't feel as essential, but you also want to find out more about him after you like learn about his whole quest and story. Yes. Yeah. It's like you want to see it's because it's kind of half of a haunted, mysterious yeah. um, experience. So that that is kind of part of the aesthetic is the dark and gritty sort of noir and part of that is not knowing yeah. having questions and getting them answered a little by a little bit at a time i, I like, like that yeah. i like yeah cuz um he's such a mysterious character that uh you you find out just so little by little like in the novel anyway like his background that it's like whoa who is this roland i don't know this roland when yeah. he was a kid you know but it didn't get. Don't worry about the orb thing because it didn't get spoiled too much. There's, we, he actually didn't mention some other stuff, and it got spoiled a little bit for me because I did. I read the first graphic novel. Uh, yeah, just don't read any of the graphic novels. All right. I, I just got to the <laughs> grapefruit part. I was like, they're calling it a grapefruit. What? Right. Yeah, because of the color of it. But yeah, right. that. Um, I personally like just the whole like all the. Uh, fight scenes action scenes shit like that and the 
I'm more of a straightforward person, so I, I I would probably like it if I would have started with the original Dark Tower actual book. I would I would have liked the intrigue of like, oh, what is the backstory? But I definitely don't mind going into it like, cool. I know the whole thing about Susan. Now I can focus on what's ahead. Uh, like you know what. Uh, what is coming up instead of focusing on, oh, who is he? What is his backstory mm-hmm. and shit? Do you think that's a guy girl thing? Maybe might be a little bit. Because what you said about foreplay, now I'm kind of wondering too. Right. Because uh, <laughs> it's kind of like a tease. And then, like, it is kind of like a masculine mentality. You'd be like, just tell me. Let's get this out of, let's get yeah. this out of the way. Right. Like, if lay a guy- the foundation and then you build up. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and that's such a dude thing. Yeah. You and have to start at the beginning, people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And for maybe a more more female, my right, you're you're kind of you listen to that kind of stuff, and you're like, yeah, but what about the? Come on, what about romance? <laughs> Tease me a little. Yeah. What about the journey? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What about the, what about the narrative? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Susan. That's true. <laughs> okay, you don't have to tell me all at once. Take your time. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Just show me a little. That's fine. Maybe we have some conversation. <laughs> tell me when you're ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and Craig yep. had an interesting take from the books uh, that he. He basically said in the book, Susan was portrayed as like a whore. Mm-hmm. Is that true? We didn't even get yeah, that. Yeah, we're not even there yet. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm telling yeah. you. it's it's uh, He's haunted by her. I think yeah. they, okay. they mention her kind of in passing. But like she said, it's not essential to the plot. Okay. Uh, but uh, the, the drawing of the three. I don't know why they didn't have the three in the graphic novel, too. Because it's literally called drawing of the three. So if they don't have that plot. Then that's kind of on. Well, they just haven't gotten there to that point yet in the story. But they mm. should. It's the title <laughs> of the book. Man, it was so good too. Oh my god, I was blown I away. I really want to talk about Detta because that was hilarious. <laughs> like when you actually think about what she is, that that's like okay. So D- Detta is one of the three, right? Yeah. yeah. When Those he finds her, important. she is a black woman living in uh, New York City, j- circa like what nineteen fifties, fifties, forties, like no, the fifties. Yeah, maybe the 50s, because that's when the MLK marches are happening, yeah. you know, civil rights era, um, activism. She's a big figure in it. Yeah. So that's that's Odetta. The, uh, yeah. The original, the proper, the uh, rich black girl yeah. whose dad is like this. Um, like a dental patent yeah, he, uh, inventor. He's like de- the dental patent guy yeah. in that industry. And she's super rich. She, she was on like the cover of Time for her activism work and all that. Yeah, she's highly yeah. educated. Yeah. Um, but she she also has this um dysfunction. She has a she has a mental illness. She's basically uh what used to be called it's like multiple personality disorder, right? Is that schizoaffective what it is? Is it schizo? disorder or whatever. Uh we call that now schiz like schizoaffective yeah. or, or something. Back so then they just called it that. Multiple one of the, personality. The quotes that he had in the beginning of her uh story was the perfect schizophrenic is the one that doesn't realize they're, they're schizophrenic. That's paraphrased, but basically mm-hmm. both her personalities are not aware of each other. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, but her other personality uh, is very interesting sort of shadow personality, like a yeah. contrast to Detta. Detta is a highly educated Manhattanite, basically activist, civil rights, you know, whatever. Uh, she's also missing her legs below the knees. So okay. she's in a wheelchair, right? Uh, but she goes down to Selma, Alabama. She protests, right? They lock her up. She she does the whole thing. But then every once in a while, she'll disappear for weeks. Mm-hmm. Now, this is where her other personality comes into play. And her other personality is it's Odetta. Yeah. And No, Od- no, that's Detta. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. I guess that would make more sense. So Odetta is the educated, genteel, uh-huh. whatever. O- Detta. Odetta Holmes and then Detta Walker. Yeah. Detta Walker. Which is ironic. She They don't walk. But she's... Just the, she is basically a hustler. She's like big time hustler, prostitute, violent, violent, steal, like hustler. Like, like she'll go to jewelry stores and and tell them, like, okay, let me see that necklace over there, honey. And then she just starts fucking raking in all the jewelry, and then she makes a wheel run for it in her wheelchair. Yeah, That's what I was gonna ask. I'm like, so how is she hustling in a wheelchair? Like, I was like, real quick, quick to tip a person over. <laughs> you just kick her, but she's so she she's, uses it to her advantage because they they would never 
you know they yeah. wouldn't suspect her yeah. and yeah. then they don't know what to do when she's trying to get away plus those things are kind of heavy especially the older ones the older models right <laughs> so she could like torpedo into just a group of people and get away and she's just so violent um, she hates white people she hates crackers yeah. Right. She's honkies. like, yeah, you got damn honkies. Right? And so and she talks like that. She yeah. talks like uh, like a band Looney Tunes cartoon character. You know what I mean? Like she's just like, hey, hey show enough. Uh, we got to do this fucking shit. Fucking it's a racist ass, depiction. Like, yeah, stereotypical. Yeah. I actually went on Reddit to like look at what people are saying about this book. You know what they're going to say. They were offended by this character. Of they're going to be offended by the whole book. I mean, right. Because. But that's the thing about her. I don't know what he was trying to say with this. Uh, I mean, I kind I guess I kind of do, right? Where uh, eventually when the twins or the, the two personalities recombine and accept each other, mm-hmm. Detta, be- Detta Walker becomes one of their biggest assets. Because yeah. really at the end of the day, right, she's, she's a strong... Don't take no shit, lady. A right? gunslinger. A gunslinger. She's, she, right, she, that, the, it's the personality of a gunslinger that that was just kind of a stray, right? Who, that didn't have a purpose. And once she does, she's fucking badass. But she still talks like that. Like she's like, honky ass, motherfucker, crack ass shit, right? So Ma-fa. basically- That's yeah. how he spells it, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, motherfucker, <Ma-fa>, right? <laughs> Your fucking p- pink penis, motherfucker. Right? And then, so basically she's like super Negro is what's happening there. She's like super jigaboo, right? She's just like, <laughs> that, that is, you know what I'm saying? Like that, that- Yes, we get what you're saying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> And that, that's like that's, a superhero. Yeah, you know, she's like a superhero of some kind, right? But she's it's just hilarious that he would do that. That and it's it just blew my mind that I was like, this is what he's going for. All right. Well. But but he does it in a way that it's not racist because yeah. he acknowledges like all the characters in the book are like, whoa, she talks like a caricature. Mm-hmm. I think they one of the characters actually like thinks that or says that like she sounds like a caricature. Yeah. Huh. And it's a caricature that gets used as a strength. Right. Right. I, I don't I didn't find it. Well, here's the thing is, uh, let's say I didn't find it racist. I thought it was I thought it was good. I thought it was wild. Right. I thought it was very brazen. And I liked it because of that, because it was just a crazy. It was just like, oh, shit, he did that. That's hilarious. But uh, I, I I think that the word racism is different now before. I think what, what I would written? think of. I think people throw around racism to mean yeah. Literally anything that has to do with um, anything, anything racial, anything yeah. racial at all. So yeah. it kind of is a meaningless word. Yeah. So people kind of just throw it around, and uh, I don't even know if they're offended by it anymore themselves. Because no. it's thrown, people say it almost like people say racism now almost as if they wish it would make them feel something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. You ever you ever notice That's, when people do it with all the isms like sexism and stuff? Now it's it's very rare that that slight is actually being done. It's just that it's a buzzword to get like, oh, sympathy or whatever the fuck they're looking for. And it, at this point, it is a boy who cried wolf scenario where it's like people have just been saying it for so long that at this point, everybody else is just like, meh, maybe. But, but they're just tired. But they say it anyway. They they say it in this jaded, like a jaded whore. You it's, know, it's lazy. Just, yeah, it's, yeah, it's like this lazy and it's another word. I'm. It's like a lazy but listless. You know what I mean? Like they wish, they wish it was happening. You know, they they are almost saying it because they hope maybe it is racist. Maybe you know, maybe my life isn't that mediocre. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe there is something going on that I can do something about. Well, it does feel good to point fingers. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. But it's happened so much that it's almost like I can't be impressed by somebody just saying ah oh, that's racist through like a cloud of vape you know like fucking <laughs> it just that's all i see so i don't know i think it just gets people off so they're trying that odetta person she somehow goes into the dark tower world, like gets through the doors of the dark tower to roland's world or yeah. what mm-hmm. yeah they mm-hmm. pull her through well there's a whole thing going on with these doors yeah yeah that's what i was right? saying like yeah. yeah the dark she gets through the doors to like this dimension alternate dimension or whatever the fuck mm-hmm. is this even cool. impressive to you because you're like in the metaverse a fair amount of time no i i love all this shit i was yeah. blown away yeah yeah why <laughs> you know what i mean like i don't uh i don't uh, i have a headset but i don't go on to vr that often but i would think somebody who did so often um 
as a recreation would not be as impressed or something. Maybe I'm wrong about that. No, because VR is fake. Yeah. And while I'm know. reading this, this is real, you know? Oh, interesting. And it's like, I don't know. In VR, you're just going to these different worlds. And at first, it's very mind-blowing and very immersive. And you're like, holy shit, I'm here. And once in a while, you're like, wow, I really feel like I'm here. But you also know it's just a screen sitting in front of your eyes. Yeah. And and in the end, you're just hanging out with your friends, you know? Like, you're just doing this just with with a screen on your head <laughs> as a hot dog you know? you yeah think, you're, you're basically in a chat room do you think yeah. with like the technology they have now with vr they would be able to do like a dark tower like you could go into the dark tower and go to different worlds Oh, for sure for sure nice that would be cool so if you're talking about like i don't know hemorrhoids or canker sores <laughs> and it just kind of like takes you out shit. of it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys, I gotta be. Uh, I'll be right back. I have diarrhea. <laughs> yeah. I just had a lot of uh, Olive Garden. Exactly. Uh, my butthole feels weird. Hurry up! We you need know to, what this song all about? We right. need to run across the, the uh, desert. I need to go take a shit. All right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Be right. Brb, everybody. You gotta pause your nightmare world so that yeah. somebody can go to the bathroom. Um. Well, how much is uh, Shimi come up in the in the bo- books Shimi? later? Shimi does he, does he come up at all? Which like, Shimi? He's the, um, the town, basically the town idiot who gets oh, magic. oh drug addict. Is he, oh no no Shimi's a kid. He's a kid. She in, the, in the graphic novel, he uh like right near the beginning of the second book, he gets some powers from a uh, cyborg that's in a tank. Um. He and it allows him to teleport and do all kinds of crazy shit. He rides his mule into the grapefruit, like literally just like puts himself in the grapefruit. But he was just a town idiot whenever the book started. Uh, so he's like really simpleton who gets like almost godlike powers. I really I, I was hoping he goes far, but I'm like, this is the kind of character you kill off pretty quickly. Yeah, Like you make him do some really cool shit. He heals the three uh, main characters in the book at one point and then goes and saves Roland. But I'm like, yeah, he's probably going to get in a big old battle with a big, uh, ba- a big bad and die. But mm, horribly. That, yeah. Shimi's, I think uh, Shimi is not present in the first two novels. I figured something yeah. like that. He probably gets killed in the graphic novels pretty quickly. Shimi? Yeah. Maybe what, but I don't think he's even in. He's not in the first two. Now, do you remember Shimi? No. Uh, okay. Yeah, because there is there is a kid. That's probably why they put. Maybe they put Shimi in the graphic novels because they left out the Jake? kid, Jake. You know Jake, Mm-mm. right? So Jake is a kid that gets thrown into another sacrifice. Yeah, as a sacrifice, he goes. He gets. He comes from our world basically. Yeah, and just fight. He basically dies in our world and then ends up in his in Roland's world. So um, he's not in the graphic novels also. And yeah, that's crazy. Well, that's, they probably didn't put them both because they didn't want like two cute kids dying. They had to, they want to stretch it out, you know? <laughs> so. Yeah. Oh, it, Shimi, Shimi is, seems awesome to me. I, I wanted him to go far, but I knew he was probably going to get uh, killed pretty quickly because he is just the nice. He's just like, oh, I got to, I got to <laughs> help out Roland with whatever. It's like, he's the nicest kid. And then he's given like, superpowers and it's like yeah you're they're gonna make you do something that's gonna get you killed for sure i wonder how many more characters like that we're gonna meet yeah (laughs) i mean probably gonna be a fair amount i think his whole his whole story is about that yeah yeah Yeah, it's (laughs) there's gonna be a lot of sacrificing friends of roland and shit first first david poor david did you know uh there's a a medieval poem that this is based on no um, you know you about and it. your poetry. Huh? <laughs> well, I'm going to just sum it up. But it, it's actually a really good poem. It's short. Um, but he was inspired by this uh, poem by some fucking British guy. <laughs> but anyway, the but it, it's actually interesting because uh, it's, it's kind of like the first uh, anti-hero stories mm. of of the of recorded history i that's think that's cool yeah so because it was at the time when everything was about knights and dragons right. and castles and king arthur and the, the knights of the round table 
And then this guy wrote this sort of really pessimistic, different kind of hero's journey. It's like the anti-hero's journey. It's someone who failed, but they keep going. And that's kind of him. So, but the poem, I think is, it's implying like the Dark Tower is the journey you take as a failure, right? It's a journey you take when you just keep riding out on your quest, even though it's hopeless. It's like a drug addict. It's like alcoholics, right? Stephen King's an alcoholic. So <clears throat> for some people, it's comedy, right? Stand-up comedy is their dark tower. Uh, so I don't know that he's ever going to get to a dark tower is, is kind of what I'm wondering based mm. on that poem. I don't know. What do you think of that? <laughs> I mean, it's it, it definitely is a, a a metaphor for like addiction and shit. Yeah. Uh, I I feel like yeah, it's with his backstory with his mom and all that kind of shit. Uh, yeah, it's it's ultimately not going to end well for him either. Like he's gonna have to sacrifice a whole bunch of shit, and then then at the end. Yeah, he might not ultimately reach his main goal. Well, it might not be a hero's journey, right? Yeah. If if he's really taking inspiration from this poem, then this whole journey is like the opposite of what anyone... That's why everybody keeps dry, dying and everything, because it's, it's like a lost cause from the beginning. He's Maybe. going to something that is just... He's going to the dark tower. He's going to towards destruction. So... It's going to destroy everybody, including him. Well, maybe it's... Is that what he's trying to prevent? That's what I'm saying. That's why it's crazy, because if... I don't know how, how, how much he's going to map this to the poem, but if, if he is going to map it to the poem, the end of the poem is basically he, gets, he finally gets to this tower, this uh, mirage in this desert, which I'm sure inspired the, the landscape in this book, right? Uh, and all he does is stand there, and he sees everybody who ever died helping him on the quest, waiting for him there, like Whoa. ghosts or some shit. But that's the poem. So I don't know that. Uh, well, maybe it's just. I don't know that that's what's going to actually It's like a, a hero's journey that what you think it's a hero's journey, but then it's really just a redemption story. Here, that's the end of it. Huh? Maybe it's just like a, what you think is a hero's journey, but what ends up really being a redemption story, like a redemption arc, you know? Maybe. Oh, thank you. Yes, oh. it's that one. Thank you so much. Nice. Yeah, Robert Browning, um, whom I have never heard of before. He didn't even know the name or the person who wrote it, and he pulled it up just as quick as you did. Yeah, we both used oh. Google. Yeah, exactly. I know. I'm just fucking. I'm just being stupid. <laughs> I was being <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I was just being yeah. an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Clay. <laughs> Great job being an asshole. Uh, so I don't know. I just feel like this adds something to this book for me. And I'm trying to figure it out because it's kind of in a weird way. This was written a long time ago, but it's kind of a new concept or it's something. It's a concept I didn't consider in this way. Mm -hmm. The that uh, something like addiction. And this isn't based on modern addiction. There was no heroin or fentanyl around this time, right? This is something they had opium. They did, like but they had they had their early drugs. They had their early <laughs> drugs, but I'm saying this is this is something interesting to me. I don't know that I'm trying to see in the Dark Tower too, because if you look at it that way, then it 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 kind of reads differently. Because you think of uh, I don't know what did you think of Roland's quest ultimately? Um. You think it's on a worthy journey? Yeah, I think so. Because that, that's the vision that uh, the man in black gave him on that beach, right? At the end of the first book. Where it's like, yeah, you're killing all these people. And this is what it all means. In the end, you have to, like, save the worlds. You know? Mm -hmm. um, so I thought it was like, oh, the, it'll be worth it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Sorry to disappoint me. But look, it's a poem. It's not, he didn't write the poem. He just wrote a book inspired by it. So I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. No. I just, I just figure this is just something interesting to keep in mind. Yeah. And I mean, <clears throat> in the, in this second book, uh, whenever he goes and meets um, the big bad, like the king dude uh, in, 
what is that realm? The also that wizard guy you can't trust that guy. He's he's kind of like a, the a satanic figure, almost. Yeah, yeah. like like a lies, like a, like uh, he tells you he's the trickster, he, yeah, like a yeah. trickster. Yeah, he, he whenever they go to the thunderclap is one of the realms, uh, and he meets the wizard who has all the orbs and everything. Um, that guy reveals that he is basically Roland's like great 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 uncle, like the line of Eld. No, stop telling us that. What? It was in the book. It was in the book I read that we're discussing. All right. I'm sorry I'm discussing the book. It is very King Arthur in that way. Yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, apparently he is actually that the evil wizard dude is a direct descendant of Arthur Eld. Mm -hmm. Like his that was his father. He's wait, that's an actual King Arthur story? Oh, is it? No, I don't know. What did you say about King Arthur? Well, I think just that I think it does the similarities. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think it does actually. That that is where he pulled that the whole line of Eld. I think is supposed to be referencing King Arthur as the uh, like Roland's great 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 grandfather. That's oh. why he's supposed to be the one who goes and saves. But this magical king uh, was all is the direct son of Arthur Eld, who made it. Not only with humans, but with other creatures. Uh, what do you mean, made it? Like fucked. Oh, I thought that's what I thought you meant. I, was, I, I, I was, I thought maybe I missed a part of the conversation. <laughs> I was just like, are you talking about fucking yeah. creatures right now? Made yeah. as man and wife. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, Arthur Eld, apparently went across all the plains and like because they were running out of people. So he's just like, I'm gonna spread my seed, even wow. with like magical creatures and shit. How very Zeus of him. And That's so yeah. technically the evil guy in this story does have a rightful claim to the throne, but his rightful claim with it, he wants to be like, all right, let's break down all the walls and just let everything run amok. Huh? Yeah. Okay. So that <laughs> evil guy is the reason why the world fell and it's like time's mm -hmm. all weird and shit. Yep. Oh, interesting. Okay. That adds something else to the whole like, the the novel so far that I yeah. read because I yeah. didn't know that was that guy. See, it's good to have a base. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, but it's also it's also interesting to not have one. <laughs> you know, I don't think either one of these are better than the other. No, for it, sure. I, I do feel like um, I'm wondering if dudes will prefer the graphic novel more often and and like women more often will prefer the novels or something like that. If that's even going to be a thing, I think there's two things like because of the whole some of the mystery. Yeah, I, I feel like seeing where the story starts and then like going from the beginning, the beginning, not like in the middle and then there being prequels and then you go see read the prequels later. I feel like they're, that they're not the novels were written first, though. Yeah, but prequel a prequel comes out after the, the original. Yeah, but, but it takes place chronologically before. But wouldn't you want to read it the way it, came, it was published? You can. That, that's like Star Wars. Yeah. You know, like some people like to start where they started with Star Wars, but some people like to be like see it happen in order to kind of get the the. I, I like to do that just to see if they they have any inconsistencies and shit. You know, in the story. Personally, I'm I, I'm very I don't know, but you're very orderly. I get it. Not yes. orderly, just yes. detail oriented with stories, which is stupid. I know. He's very order. Very orderly. <laughs> order. Ordered. He's like, I'm not orderly. When we came in, he's like, all right, I got the Google Doc. <laughs> I'm here like, there's a Google Doc? <laughs> Look, this is the one thing I, I do. Google Doc. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is the one thing I do that I try to be professional, okay? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> you can't help it's your personality. This I'm is your dark say, tower. Listen, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> this is your dark tower. I'm not fooled by your fucking look. I know what you are. I, you know, that shit doesn't fool me, okay? I know that you are a very organized person. You, it doesn't you just no, don't feel, you're you're on drugs clay you're on <laughs> drugs nobody right now i haven't even smoked weed today yeah and that's why you pulled out a google doc and shit the first minute you, the, the, the five minutes you get in here right you didn't do it when you were eating mushroom chocolates for two hours on the in the last episode yeah, i did i always pull out the google doc so then what are you talking like you're proving me right you're proving me more right are you organized no you're not and look at me i lost my book mm, yeah i, I bring notes <laughs> I lose I lose things also and yeah. I don't have notes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. 
I did write the notes, but I lost the notes. Yeah, I wrote notes too. I have actually, I, now you just mentioned that I just remembered that I had notes oh. and uh, that I had written them down in my phone and nice. I forgot all about them and we've been talking for an hour. So, Janice, <laughs> <laughs> VR. But I did cover everything. Oh. So, yeah, okay. cool. See, we don't need it. Yeah, we're smart. <laughs> you yeah. know one note that I made? Huh? You know one note that I made what? is uh, he compares him to the Terminator, which I thought was funny. Roland? Yeah. <laughs> Just okay. single minded, very like kind of emotionally. Yeah, has closed. one job and yeah. is kind of like, yeah, we're going to do this. I might fuck a chick along the way, but she's probably going to die. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so he's the Terminator, but if the Terminator fucked. Yeah, you know? exactly. Like, <laughs> fuck. I mean, that is the first thing that he does whenever he gets like finishes becoming the gunslinger. He's yeah. Like, he goes find a hooker to fuck. And he tells the court, too, I'm going to go. Find a whore, maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he does it because he just knows that his t- uh, testicular limits have been reached, so he needs to uh, eject excess yeah. spunk, testicular limits know, in order to <laughs> in order to continue wow. his journey. I never heard that phrase before. <laughs> Time to unload. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, "What?" He's like, "Prepare for unloading." <laughs> As he comes, it's like beep, 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 beep. Where would you like it? Yeah. <laughs> I have deposited my load on your trap stamp, <laughs> which is in the shape of a target. So perfect. <laughs> Man, that would be perfect. God dang it. Too bad that's like, that would be the most white trash thing, a tramp, a target tramp stamp. I mean, that, that it's out there. It's got. It's yeah. out there. We, look, Justin's going to pull it up. I already know it's out there. It's, that's out there. It, that's not even worth discussing. That's out there. Let's just wait for the inevitable tramp stamp with the Target logo on it. Let's just do that. These are Walmart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's also to be expected. For sure. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, that is definitely like a white trash person who works at Walmart and for some reason is just really proud that they've worked for four years at Walmart. You know, and uh, hey, you know, they did something for for five years I, like and I, I understand that. But it's like, man, I, I my ultimate goal is like have my own company and stuff. I cannot see myself just being like so uh, content with just being just a Walmart employee. Yeah, uh, that, that is, is very depressing. Like the furthest mindset from how, how I think I'm like, fuck, mm-hmm. that would be horrible to me yeah i don't know well maybe that person doesn't expect to 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 live long or something right nah. i don't know like people with a shorter life expectancy or something like they, they figure they'll just be out of here by their 40s or something right walmart's kind of like what you can do right yeah. some people just don't give a fuck. that's true yeah. they want to yeah. be lazy. they don't want to have responsibility they yeah don't be accountable for anything other than hi yeah Welcome. but then how do you still take pride in let's not pretend something. they have pride but then why do you have a Walmart tattoo? Exactly. Oh. You know what I'm saying? That is the next level of like, not only have I accepted being a Walmart manager, whatever the fuck, but I am going to tattoo it on my back. <laughs> and somebody's going like, to come on it. I almost was that kind of because like I, I was assistant manager at a Sonic for like six years. Wait a minute. And so I was like getting to the point in Louisiana where like I could have become like a GM or some shit. And it, it, I, even back then, I was still just like, no, I want to actually do. So I want to write books and shit. I cannot. That's why I moved away was just like, let's get away from this place where yeah. you just become content uh, with a menial job. And wait, wait, what if they hate Walmart? Hate it. For working for five years so much so that they would want a tramp stamp so that somebody would come on oh it God. consistently and then they every time somebody comes on their back they feel good desecrate me yeah <laughs> there you go. they're just like yeah uh, the ultimate like masochist just like i'm gonna make it their problem too <laughs> yeah that, that's a level of malevolence because no one's ever gonna know yeah. right it's God. just it's kind of just you and your and your lower back it's just between you and that walmart stamp. you have to hit the star oh there it is wow <laughs> yeah you wow. have to hit the star in the middle of the walmart <laughs> god damn i love this country yeah the bullseye is a, a, a hilarious one even if it's not target that that is a hilarious yeah, tramp stamp. look at that justin bieber one Get out of here. Really? Wait, <laughs> Where? which one? But that one right now. Oh, I love oh, Justin wow. Bieber. Yeah. God dang it. 
Uh, that's so bad. Like, if you're fucking that person from behind, you're like, I have to look at Justin Bieber's name while I'm fucking you. This is <laughs> why would you do this to any he, any man? That's just. <sighs> uh, well, unless Justin Bieber ends up being there somehow. Then yeah, that's I mean, of, oh look at that! Hell yeah! It's a sad nice. world. Nice. Wow. <laughs> it's making me depressed. There. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> this is kind of depressing. Oh, There's yeah. One very. Diarrhea. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, that's wow. Great. Well, I almost kind of admire that a little bit, actually. <laughs> yeah. That you is know what? funny. That, that, that actually got me back to feeling a little bit good. I, I hope that that's a comic. That's a, that's a person like that really took ownership of their bodies, you know? Yeah. Uh, what 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 is this? What is the people walking across? The, yeah, what is that? The one to Wait, the left. are those the seven dwarves? No, left and down. And it's right across the crack the of their ass. <laughs> yep, that is the seven doors. That, that is the seven wow, doors coming out of amazing. a mine. Amazing. That is. That means poop. That's a dude. Right? Yeah. So. Oh, actually, the, this is a game that they play on by guys, uh, where you see somebody completely naked from, or you see their dick, and you have to tell whether they're man, woman, or trans. Oh. So with just that butthole picture. Great game, dude. What do, what do y'all think it is? I'm, I mean, I'm I saying even, man. If, if it's the choice between playing that game and uh, getting knocked unconscious right now, I would choose <laughs> to lose consciousness. <laughs> we have an outro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just blackout. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what is the? There's a human centipede one. I can't. These aren't even. You know what's the saddest thing about this is that this isn't even interesting. Do you know what I'm saying? Like. What? Huh? That all of the tram, like once you see all of the tram stamps, they're trying so hard to be interesting. It is, it is less interesting. Yeah. yeah. This is like one of the most boring. This, it's this not is just, particularly clever. It's not. Yeah, the diarrhea yeah. one's clever. The, the <laughs> that's this. the most clever yeah. one. Yeah. which is saying something. But yeah, like, exactly. yeah, most of them are just simple, like like Trump's face. Okay. Logos, Such hacks. Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nobody's original. You just, <laughs> yeah, put a picture of your mom or something. Uh, you know, some of them are artsy, which is dumb. Yeah, like having butterflies as a tram stamp. It's like shut up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you like ballet and you're a whore. I mean, just do it. Like, live the life. Stop fucking bragging about it. <laughs> God damn. You know, this is the reason why um, this uh, Dark Tower world was even allowed to happen, probably. I bet that guy, that wizard just saw too many tramp stamps and he was like, you know what? Fuck this world. Let's put it all together because I hate it. <laughs> Find a new dimension. That to medieval go. guy. Yeah. <laughs> he just gets a, a tramp stamp of the Dark Tower on his back. Yeah. And he's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna break it apart. Break it apart." <laughs> a Dark Tower tramp stamp would be a kind of badass. Taint stamp. A taint stamp. So the towers. Uh, oh, Justin. Oh my God. Oh, that would <laughs> hurt. <laughs> yeah, this is a little weird. Hurt. That would hurt so bad. Why would you want to taint, Justin? You are. I'm not saying I'm gonna fucking get you... it. You. <laughs> Do you have a taint tattoo? No, but. I... Uh huh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what would you get it just for the knowledge? Because you clearly thought about this. You just randomly come up with. He just wanted to bring that up. He was like, "Oh, finally, I can bring this up." <laughs> this is the first what group of it? people. If you're that reading this, you're driving too close. Oh, nice. <laughs> if you're reading this, you have my balls in your mouth. <laughs> and upside down. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> I love how really tiny, tiny, <laughs> tiny <laughs> writing. <laughs> Some skill. <laughs> you got good eyesight. Yeah. <laughs> 20, 20 vision. You need one of those like little uh, jewel uh, telescope or microscopes or whatever. The little jewel thing that you look at oh, yeah. diamonds and shit and to read those it. Those are while. cool. Yeah. So have, yeah. I used to work at a jewelry store and I just played with that. Really? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Where at? Looking at things. Uh, in uh, Glendale, California. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Did you, did you? Is that what where your life started in the in the workforce as a no. jewelry person? No, that was like my tenth job, twelfth job. I wasn't very good at keeping jobs. Me neither. Yeah. Yeah. Well, probably because we don't hold on to lists or yeah do much of any of that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not very detail oriented, and unfortunately, that's ninety percent of jobs. Is yeah. Detail orientation. Man, it's hard out there. Yeah, it's hard <laughs> for ADD. Walmart. <laughs> 
Nah. Walmart. Yeah. Are they even even that, Walmart? man. I'll find a way to fuck it up. <laughs> yeah, me too. Did you I ever babysit? Because huh? that, that was like the one job where I'm like, oh, I could do this. That's the one that was freaked me out too much because I was like, I can't. If I'm like this with just regular jobs, I I would kill it. I would accidentally. Oh. Hurt, I don't want to. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to accidentally yeah. be responsible for hurting a kid, you know? Yeah. Well, if they're older, it's easier. Maybe. Yeah. But then if they're older, they're like weird kids are weird to me oh really interacting with them is weird because because they're like a little person yeah that that is what that's they are gross <laughs> <laughs> they're like a little they're like a little dumb person that you can't talk down to <laughs> so midgets are okay though <laughs> midgets are because they're adults they're like little yeah. people but they they have lived right they yeah. know they know shit that i know pretty much right but uh, like a 10 year old you know it's like it's like a it's like a little person with a fucking attitude but they don't know shit I can't. They don't know that they don't know. Yeah, and so I'm just looking, and I'm just like, you're a waste. You yeah, know? like it's a waste of time. Can't we wait had, till you're older. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Talk to me in ten years. We had like, I think it was eleven <laughs> of my nieces and nephews at the last Christmas thing we went to, and most of them don't know personal space. Like they literally come like right in your lap as you're sitting there, and like grab your yeah your shirt and like come help me with this, come help me with. This. I'm like yeah, and my my brother-in-law was just like hammered drunk and I, I know he's not the type of guy who likes kids in the first place really like he had to and he's like no fucking more and uh they were doing that to him and i'm just like looking at him and he's just like dead dead eyes just straight forward not looking at the kid i'm like he's probably just about to slap this kid upside the head honestly he didn't he's he's a lot of self-control good dude self-control but like i was just like waiting to be like, for him to be like shut the fuck up yeah i feel like some kids need to hear that though like i feel like kid, people don't adults don't tell kids enough like hey you're being annoying right now yeah, yeah. i don't know if you know this yeah some and i feel of them, like some kids will accept that you know some parents won't let you say that to their kids that's, that's where the problem, problem. Yeah. yeah it's the parents but for that's sure. that's also because i don't you know because i'll just say I, I'm honest with kids. Yeah. I think so. It, I'm, I'm just like, I don't want to step on any other parents toes with their whatever they're trying to do with their stupid kid, you know, because because some people go really one time I went uh, on a flight. There was a cup. There was a lady with a kid and the kid's name was some fucking, you know, like his name was like Tyler, you know, <laughs> or some shit. Right. And he had like long hair and he's like five. Right. This kid was a terror. He was wa running around just kicking people and just doing all that kind of stuff, you know, and yelling and stuff and just screaming his head off in, in the airplane because we were waiting to get off the flight. It was delayed. And uh, one thing I will say is that this kid had pipes like this kid. His his screaming was transcending baby screaming. It was oh, going God. into like James Brown territory. Like if <laughs> I felt like I was in a concert, I really did. I was not high. It's a man world. <laughs> me, you, no, you really screamed that high. Me, wow. me and Gene were sta sitting there. We were, we were not high, but we started giggling our fucking asses off because it was so hell. Cause the kid, he, it was literally James Brown. Sometimes he would, you know what I mean? Like when you feel almost high, cause something so weird is happening and the kid would just sound normal screaming, normal screaming. And then suddenly he would go, <laughs> you know, <laughs> And I'm like, what the fuck? You know, this kid is amazing. This kid, talented kid. And uh, and we're cracking up. Everybody's pissed off, right? This kid is kicking the guy sitting next to the lady. Oh, God. He's totally tapped out. He has cornrows, like, muscly white guy, right? And he's just on his phone, right? Then I come to realize that's his dad. Wow. That, that guy is so checked out that I thought he was a stranger to this oh, child. Oh, that guy. Right? The mom is exhausted. They're both just checked out, but they it's you can tell because they're letting him run around barefoot. His name is Tyler. He has long hair. You can yeah, tell that yeah. that's what they think they should do as parents. Yeah, right? I feel like that that was probably like their third or fourth kid. I feel like that happens whenever p parents have had like multiple kids and they're just beaten <sighs> down to where they're like, fuck it. This one's going to be a fucking menace. I don't even give a fuck. Yeah, I this one's going to be an shit. artist. <laughs> <laughs> He's artistic. He's a free spirit. He's a TikToker. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this guy, TikTok. <laughs> That's how the caste system works. Oh They're all third children of tired parents. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. All right. So uh, that's we've been talking for a, a while. A good little while. A good little while. I don't want to hold you up. Uh, oh, OK. All right. Well, how are we doing on time then in general? 112. Huh? 112. Hour 12. Hour 12. 
Okay. Well, uh, let's let's like wind down then. Let's wrap yeah. it up. Cool. Right. Um. Um. Yeah. The getting back to the story, if y'all want. Um, <laughs> sure. Let's get back to the story. <laughs> yeah. All right, I want you to read the entire synopsis in fifteen minutes. I mean, uh, okay. Um, he had shot no, the, from memory. <laughs> so he had shot the orb. The uh, why are you listening why to are me? You listening? Yeah. <laughs> she, if she's gonna challenge to me. me, I'm going to accept the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> I did not turn down a. It challenge. wasn't a challenge. <laughs> Do whatever you want. <laughs> You're a free person. <laughs> this is why I don't want to fuck with kids. You see what I'm saying? It's like, right. um, but no, yeah, he he. Gets trapped in the uh, orb f- um, by that tentacle monster. They are trying to escape from the that a group of assassins. So they're running from them while Roland is basically unconscious, popping up out of con in, in, into consciousness every now and then, but like not himself. Basically being controlled by the Crimson King, also known as the world, the Eater of Worlds. That. Uh, magical wizard dude um this is so not what was going on in the novel yeah. this is blowing my mind this is like a whole new story <laughs> yeah it's a world yeah it because in the in the novel all that's how ha- he is losing consciousness yeah uh but he's also jumping worlds so well yeah he's so but he's jumping worlds this, to get the 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 three team members for the dark tower right journey. but in this day there his body is in the physical world alan and cuthbert are carrying him while trying to escape the assassins but his mind is in the thunderclap through the orb and uh he's being carried by a giant crow who is martin broadcloak all right i don't want to i don't want to hear this i don't want to hear this <laughs> This bit, I don't want to hear this. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> this I don't is, like it. This is spoiling. This is. I don't want to. I don't want it. I want the foreplay. I love. I love how I'm a woman. I want the foreplay. I'm don't a woman. I want the foreplay. You told them what to do. Yeah. You told them what to do. We had it. Gives it to you. Typical. <laughs> Just to take it personal. And I, I love how it's spoiling, but it's technically what happened before. You know. In the storyline, it's, I don't know. Uh, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> because it wasn't intended that way. <laughs> he didn't write the sto- the novels and then and then go, oh, fuck, did I forget to tell this other part first? Let me tell it after. It wasn't like that. It was He did it intentionally for mystery. Yeah. For, for, for fucking, you know? <laughs> <Mad>. <laughs> to give you a sense of wonder and magic. <laughs> All right? To keep you guessing so that the world seems like you want to know what's going on. <laughs> I still want to know that, what's going on. No, you don't. You want yeah, it, you want everything. You said it yourself. You said you I want everything laid out so that I can get to the action. No, no. I want to I want to have it laid out in order and I'm still wondering about how it's going to end, how the battle between him and the uh, Crimson King is going to go is he going to be able to like make it to the Dark Tower all the sacrifices he's going to make along the way but I just want to read it in that order in the actual order you, you it are, happened you're going to miss out on the <laughs> the aura of, of yeah. mysteriousness you're gonna that you get out. in the novel well, there, so. no, you're going to miss out the, on the vibe bro. there's like, still the mystery how, what's, of what's, what's going to happen millennial... ahead I just won't have the mystery of, the, of what happened before because I'll have all the basis of that as a structure. Listen, I'm gonna say this in millennial speak or Gen Z or whatever the fuck this is. Okay, listen, it's it's like it's fucking with the vibes, bro. <laughs> okay, you're missing all of the vibes. There was all these vibes happening, and you missed it, bro. <laughs> yeah, right? that's pretty much it. <laughs> and that's like really not chill. <laughs> no cap. And yeah, no cap. And so we're 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 still in that vibe, right? <laughs> Did, was that okay? <laughs> that's yeah, that's about. That, thanks, that man. That's all I got. I got literally nothing else. <laughs> From here, it's just '90s throwbacks. To <laughs> yeah. Um, no way. No. Don't even tell. I don't want to hear it. Okay. I know. I was just gonna be like, all right, fine. Uh, since you don't want to hear the you, you technical spoilers. From um, ro- like every time I hear about Susan, I'm like, wow, who was this woman that affected him so much? Right. You know. Yeah, I, and I get that, but it's also like, I I have the same I have that same like thing with uh, the Crimson King because they don't really tell much about him, like besides the backstory of him being uh, son of Arthur Eld, 
but like I don't know anything about like how he like where he's from all the creatures like he talks about it's the, not the same the privy or whatever the the his race of people it's not the same like there's still mystery to be had ancestry.com bam that's it right it's not the same it's not the Magical same ancestry. it's not the same Matt, you do right but we're talking about like fucking yearning love loss right here's the difference okay you're going this is what i this is what i figure if you when you read sometimes you like some stories where you can wear a big sweater that goes over your thumb and you sit by a window and you maybe sip some tea, right? And you're reading the story and Susan, right? And then you can put it down <laughs> and you can look out the window at a tree contemplatively and then look back at the book. If you like doing that kind of shit, you should read Dark Tower <laughs> novels first, okay? Now... If you are like Clay and you read Dune and your one complaint was that there weren't enough worms. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> that, the why not more worm scenes, right? Read the graphic novel. Yeah. Okay? There's no wrong way. But this this is, you know, if you know what your vibe is, I will say that that's how you pick them. I don't that's how you pick which this. one. I don't appreciate this at all. <laughs> this is not... <laughs> It is a little shade. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, only... you don't like sweaters over your thumbs, man. Come on. You don't like the sleeves going over your thumbs. Do you like eating salads? <laughs> Do you like eating salads sometimes? Be even though you know they don't have necessarily real value, but it's refreshing, right? Then you will like the novels, okay? If you like to do pointless mm. things occasionally because life is short, so why not get a Walmart tram stamp, right? Why not get a diarrhea trans tramp stamp? <laughs> then read the novels first. That's what I'm saying, okay? <laughs> if you like Google Docs, worm action, right? And you like everything in order. If you watch Star Wars, not from when it was first produced, but from the 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 uh, the linear, the timeline. Then that's that's how you decide what to read. That's what I'm saying. Yes. <laughs> In the meantime, we cannot talk because both of us will spoil yeah. the, yeah. Other, the other the other the story for, for the other, <laughs> and that's that's awful. Yeah, I, I actually think that's really awful. I'm I was, sorry. Yeah, because <laughs> I was looking forward to comparing. Yeah, I knew there's gonna be some differences. I thought it would match up a lot more. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, I I knew that this was like the prequel thing, and I, so I was, I, but I haven't read like I've looked into it a little bit. I haven't read any of the actual novels, so. Uh, but I did know about like the uh, the picture of three and shit and uh, all that from just like doing research on the world. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm cool with it because like yeah, y'all talk about Odetta. I I'm not like I I didn't see that as spoilers, and now I'm like. Oh, cool! I can't wait till possibly the the comics, or I go read the book and I get to that point. That'll be cool. But uh, yeah, it's it for me. It is nice to have to get Sorry. the background first. <laughs> I was like, yeah, take it, and I look over at your. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's mad at me. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I'm, 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 I'm mad I'm at like this. This is not. This is divisive. You know what I'm saying? This is why this country is split this way. This is literally it. This is this is it. This is the example of of how everything is split politically or whatever culturally, right? It's literally the difference between people who like this graphic novel and people who like the novel. You're, we're getting two different stories, but it's the same story. It's just mm. different starting points. Different that was, that starting deep. points. I got to get at least one in every episode. <laughs> Otherwise, it's like I'm not really doing my job. Yeah. <laughs> it has to have to put one coin into the uh, social commentary uh, uh, bottle. And I did that. So I did my job and um, we right. did this podcast. Yeah. So. It was a fun one. Thank you so much for coming on. Anything you want to plug or uh, shout out? No. Thanks for having me on. This it was fun. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah that was You're great. like a real nerd. Yeah. We, we keep trying to find them we've only found like two or three at this point yeah. I'm, I'm so glad you guys found me yeah we're glad <laughs> we found to talk you. about it with yes 
in addition to tram stamps? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It was, it was, That's rare. You know that? <laughs> Finding someone that can talk about both? It's called ADD. Mm-hmm. And you've come to the right place. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. kind of how every episode goes. We try to focus and we fail. And uh, yeah, 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 whatever. So, yeah, we'd love to have you back for uh, oh, yeah. another one if you're down yeah, to keep reading. Yeah, I'm really excited to keep reading because that, that second book, it... I really loved it. I was yeah. like thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, next days. time we'll do we'll do the actual novels since apparently the graphic novels are ruining it for people. Mm, you better catch up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And listen, if it's a choice, I'd rather let's do the novels. I say we gotta do the novels. All right, because all right. um we already have uh, some other graphic novel um yeah, we yeah. have we have uh what's it called? Uh, the the Sandman. Sleep, Sandman. Yeah. yeah. And we're doing uh MC Lunchbox doing the Andre the Giant yeah. graphic novel. Yeah. That's gonna be fun as fuck. Right. So yeah, so let's just let's do the novel <laughs> version right. of this. Because this is pissing me off. All right. <laughs> this is pissing me off. So I don't like it. And uh, I'll probably end up reading it. But anyway. Thanks, thanks for having us, and guys, thanks for—I mean, thanks for having us. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> oh, just kill me! Yeah, <laughs> kill me now! Thanks for thanks for having me on the podcast. <laughs> You're welcome. Come yeah. again. Yeah, thank you, and, and uh, uh, thank everybody for watching. Yeah. Um, and yeah, this has been Turtle Reads. Mm-hmm. Bye. Bye. <laughs>